Option trading is so complicated, so confusing. Yeah. Well, since I'm a designer, I really want to use my design skills, design thinking to tackle this very interesting problem, to introduce, to explain option trading in the simplest way possible. In this video, I will cover the very essentials of selling put options, what it is, how it works, and give you some examples of how to do it on Robinhood. Music intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine. Today let's hit the last guy in the 2x2 two two option trading matrix and you can find the rest of them in the links up in the corner and in the description down below. As promised, this video is not going to have a lot of mathematically confusing graphs or overwhelming contents that give you that WTF feeling or too lengthy. I like to keep this short and sweet. Again, hold me accountable. You don't have to smash the like button just yet. Do it in the very end if you find this video helpful, all right? So let's dive right in. All right, so this is what sell put is about. So one put option is an opportunity to sell a share of a specific stock at a specific price, which we call this a strike price, before a specific date, an expiration date. If you remember from the buy put video, I have the exact same put option because the put options is going to be the same. No matter if you're buying it or selling, it's the same put option, all right? So now let's take a look at the things that we hear a lot about. Sell put, sell put, sell put. What it means is that you are selling one put option contract, right? So this is what the put option contract looks like, right? It defines the number of options. Each contract is 100 options because in option trading, options always trade in the block of 100 and they define the stock apple strike price this price expression date this date so whoever has this contract whoever owns this contract that person can sell 100 shares of apple at 120 strike price before this date all right so since we're talking about selling put options so you are the seller in this case so in order to sell to write a put option contract and give it to the buyer you will need to have $12,000, right? 100 times 120. Why? Because in case the person who owns this contract, the buyer, decides to use this contract, to exercise this contract, to sell 100 shares of Apple at 120, who is he gonna sell it to? He's gonna sell it to you. So you have to use this money to buy 100 shares from the buyer. So in this exchange, you will get 105, $105, because you sell the contract to the buyer, the buyer pays you 105, all right? So by selling this put, you are basically thinking Apple is not gonna go below 120, because if it never goes below 120 by the expiration date, this option is useless to the buyer. So you are going to keep all of the $105 premium from setting the call option contract. You don't have to spend a dollar to buy this back or anything like that. Or another way to think about this is by selling the put option contract, you are fine, you're okay with buying 100 shares of Apple at 120 because you might think you always wanted Apple shares and then you're just waiting to buy Apple at a low price and 120 is an acceptable price. So these are the two different mindsets that I can think of or I will have if I am selling the put option contract. So now you understand the basics, the bare bone, the very fundamental of selling put options. Now let's go to Robinhood and take a look at how you can do it on there. So this is the Robinhood web platform. You can see this trade Apple options button here. You can click into that, which will take you to the option trading UI. The default is buy call because the buy and call are selected. In order to sell a put, you just have to click sell and then click put and everything will switch to sell put. One thing to note is that if you are on sell put, the 120 put is 1.05. If you buy a put, buy the 120 put, it's also 1.25. It makes total sense because that's the same price, it's just somebody's buying it and somebody's selling it. To sell a put, sell this 120 put, you just have to click this, right? Sell 120 put and continue. And then you sell one put option contract, you review order, and well, I don't have enough money, right? Because if you remember, we need to have 12K as collateral in order to sell in this case, all right? So now let's go back to my file. 
Now let's take a look at how would the put option contract will match the information on the Robinhood UI. All right. So you see the stock is the Apple. All right, it's Apple sell put strike price 120 strike price 120 expiration date December 18th December 18th, which is typically a Friday. And you see the price here is as 1.05. It was because this price here is listed as the price for each option. And if you remember in option trading, options always trade in the block of 100. That's why in one contract, it has 100 options. So you always have to multiply this number by 100, which gives you $105. So if you were to sell this 120 put of Apple, you will receive $105. So now let's take a look at how you can make money from selling puts. Assuming you have the 12K collateral, you just click this, you sell this 120 put, then you can get this 105 right away. It's cash, it goes straight to your brokerage account. You can use that to buy more shares of something else, or you can withdraw the money to buy Starbucks, to buy a new pair of Nike or some holiday shopping as it's getting closer to Christmas. So now let's take a look at what will happen if the Apple share price goes down. If you are selling a put, you don't want this to happen. You don't want the underlying stock to go down in price. So on Monday, you sold the Apple 120 put. And then on Wednesday, it drops to 119. And on Friday, it drops even more to 118. If the market price is below the strike price, 118 is below 120, in this case, the buyer will exercise the put option, right? So you are forced to buy 100 shares from the buyers at the agreed price, 120. So you buy 100 shares at 120, which is the strike price, it's going to cost you this much. Hypothetically, if you were to sell 100 shares right away after you bought them, you can only sell them at the market price, 118. So theoretically speaking, you will have a $200 loss. So your net loss for this week, 105, the money that you received from selling the put, minus 200, the theoretical loss. So your net loss will be $95. But technically speaking, you did not lose anything. You just bought some shares. You still have 100 shares of Apple in your brokerage account. You can hold it and maybe Apple goes up in a month and then you can sell off right away. You don't lose anything. So this is a theoretical loss. Just keep that in mind. Another way to look at this is that if the stock price goes down, in this case it goes down, the put option contract price will go up, right? So in this case, since Apple has been dropping throughout the week, the put option contract price, it goes up on Wednesday to 195 to 225 on Friday. So another thing you can do is you can buy back the put because every time you sell a put, you have an open position. In order to close the position, you have to do the opposite, which means you buy back the put, you sell it, you buy it, they cancel out each other, you close out the position. So if you buy back the put, you don't have to buy any shares because now the position is closed, all right? So if you buy back the put option on Friday, you will cost you 225. So your net loss will be 120 because you collect 125 by selling it and then you spend 225 buying it. So your net will be negative 120. So in this case, you will actually lose money. So this is what you will see on Robinhood. If the fish share price is below the strike price, you will not see 1.05, you will see 2.25. So if you were to buy back this put option contract, you will just click buy and click 2.25, buy this put option back to close your position. In the previous case, when the buyers exercised it, you technically did not lose anything. You just bought some shares, but in this case, this actual monetary loss. Another thing you can do is on Wednesday, I'm gonna cut losses, I'm done for this week. Then you can buy back the put option contract on Wednesday, spend $195 for it. So your net loss will be $95 instead of 120. Now let's take a look at the bull case, the case that you want, the good news, the winning one. So on Monday, you sold the same 120 put. And on Friday, Apple price goes up to 122. As long as at the end of Friday, Apple market price is above the strike price, right? So as long as the underlying stock price on Friday is above, is higher than the strike price, you win. You're gonna keep all $105 from originally selling the put to yourself. You don't have to spend another dollar, another cent to buy anything back because at that point, the option will be worthless because it doesn't mean anything anymore to the buyer. Another way to look at this is that if the stock price goes up, the put option contract price will go 
down. So in our example, the Apple market price is above 120. It's 122, it's above 120, above the strike price at the expiration, December 18th, Friday. The put option contract price will go to zero. So the same put option contract that you sold, the price of it is going to go to zero at the end of Friday, which means if you were to buy it back, you would just have to spend zero dollars. So the net profit for this week is going to be 105 minus zero equals 105. So on Robinhood, this is what you will see. It doesn't matter what the share price is as long as it's above 120, above the strike price, the put option that you sold, anything below the share price is gonna be zero. So this is what you will see on Friday if this happened, all right? By selling a put, if you have the 12K collateral, you can sell a put every week and collect some premium every week. And at the end of the week, if the underlying stock price is above the strike price, you get your 12K released back to you and use it to sell another put next week. So the winning case for selling put is actually very straightforward, very simple. All right, guys, we have covered the fundamentals and two practical examples, one when the underlying stocks goes up and one for when it goes down. Well, selling puts is not that complicated overall, isn't it? Do you understand what it is now and how to use it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you have learned what you wanted, congratulations and hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, also consider smashing the subscribe button. This will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.